Welcome back, everyone. I'll introduce the panelists, and then um, they'll s say a few words about their work while it flashes behind them. And then we'll launch into a conversation. Um, Sarah Norell um, graduated in 2006. She was a sociology major and uh, an art minor. And she received her MFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago last year in 2009. And she lives and works in Chicago. And Nora Rabins graduated in 2004. She was an art major and a logic minor. And um, she received her MFA from the Rhode Island School of Design, MFA in Furniture Design. Um, and she lives and works in Providence. So, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah. So what you're gonna see are stills from a 17 minute video. It's called Ocean Flavored Gum. And the work explores identity and gender through burlesque costume and dance. And I did quite a bit of research on burlesque and took burlesque lessons in order to create the piece. And in my research uh, on the history and the development of burlesque, I kept coming across the phrase um, uh, that the, the women of burlesque had been declawed. And so in this work, I aim to return their claws. Um, I was also inspired by the uh, work of the queer theater in the 1960s and the work of Jack Smith. And I'm constructing a queer female voice within that context. And hello, thanks for being here. My work um, examines the intersection of the domestic and the industrial. Um, I use pre-existing objects as a means to reflect on our material culture. Um, oftentimes anthropomorphizing these objects uh, in order to comment on societal roles. And uh, often I create uh, structures and spaces that enable communal interaction and provide a, a sense of, of belonging and familiarity. First question, though this panel is called After Smith, you actually made some important strategic decisions while you were still here. And so could you speak about some of them and could you also, and then launch into the path and the decisions you made after leaving here? Well, I was a transfer student to Smith and um, a sociology major, as Lynn mentioned. Um, in my junior year, I discovered that I, I really wanted to pursue a degree in art, but there wasn't quite enough time to double major, and so I minored. Um, and, and at this time, I, I wanted to make art, but I thought as a career, I would go into art administration. So uh, for my Praxis, uh, Praxis internship, I went to a artist collaborative down in North Carolina called Elsewhere Elsewhere, and was an archivist for a summer. Uh, then I took the fall of my senior year off and I went to New York and interned for the Whitney Museum as a, um, in the membership de department and then later in the 2006 biennial exhibitions department. Uh, during this time I also uh, worked at Exit Art, the nonprofit gallery down in, um, I guess it's in Hell's Kitchen now. Uh, so I came back my senior year and graduated and knew that I needed to spend some time on writing and on um, putting together a portfolio if I wanted to go to art school, which is what I decided after experiencing the administrative side, I decided I wanted to be an artist and not an administrator. Uh, so I went to Sarah Lawrence and did an informal post back 
and uh, worked for Marina Abramovich as a studio assistant. Um, so then I, I applied to grad schools and was really drawn to the School of the Art Institute uh, because of its interdisciplinary nature. Um, I really wanted to explore what kind of art I wanted to do, and SEIC allowed me to do that. And I was also interested in getting a little bit of distance from the New York art scene. It felt a little overwhelming at that time. Um, so I went to SEIC, and I was in the performance department for... Um, that's the, part, the department I entered in, and I worked a lot with Faith Wilding, who's there in the performance department, uh, but ended up mostly in the film, video, new media department, working with Greg Bordowitz. Uh, I graduated last year, and I decided to stay in Chicago, and um, I am an artist, and I work in as, a, as an administrative assistant for the University of Chicago. And... Um I came to Smith knowing that I <clears throat> wanted to major in art and partially came to Smith to work with Lee Burns, um, uh, the sculpture professor, and I found logic and fell in love with it. Um, and I think both of those um, realms have really inform continued to inform my work um, to this day, and, and I continue to look f uh, for the intersection between those fields of knowledge uh, I, I graduated in 2004 and stayed in the area for two years living in East Hampton. Um, for my Praxis internship, I had not gone anywhere. I had stayed in East Hampton and um, just wandered around this building called One Cottage Street that's in East Hampton where a lot of craftspeople work and just you know the, a very real a very reality based um, way of getting started. I just walked around until I found someone who, who could use my um, free hours of labor. And that's how I got started. Um, and, and I continued to work for craftspeople in this area and learned skills uh, by working with you know, fine woodworkers. And I worked at an auction in the area, very interested in objects and their histories. And um, you know, here at the museum, I was a guard at the Smith College Museum of Art, had lots of time to reflect. Um, and um, it's, by the way, very great to be back, and I really appreciate being here. Um, I had, uh, do mostly to confidence issues. I, I didn't apply right away to grad school, nor did I decide right away that I would attend grad school, but I was driven to do so um, through a uh, sheer need to fulfill my um, desires not only to create, but also to be part of a community that is based around creating and asking questions and challenging oneself and each other. Um, and so I um, decided to um, apply to UMass for, a, uh, I, I believe it was an interior design or an interior um, degree of some kind and because I'm very interested in the domestication of spaces and what that means, its implications in terms of uh, my role as a woman, etc. And also I'm working with my hands as a sculptor and um, so the, the interior environment sort of uh, allow, would allow me to work with that. But I figured while I was at it I would also apply to my dream school about which I knew very little but knew um, that I would like to go there in my, my dream. And so I pretended to apply, which what was I called, um, uh, and um, got in to RISD. Yeah, um, my, my first year at RISD, thanks, Lynn, um, because I did go to Smith College and not to an art school, um, they, the RISD furniture department asked me to come for an extra, um, per, sort of a preliminary year uh, studying with the undergraduates, which is a very strong discipline specific and, and technically oriented skill, uh, skill specific in terms of m working with the materials and the processes and also in terms of um, the design process. And after completing that aspect of my education was able to kind of go back into um, what my work means and, and, and uh, the conceptual aspects and even the aesthetic aspects after gaining the technical skills that I needed to be able to fabricate my, um, my hallucinations. And um, 
I'd like to ask you about how you're sustaining your practice since graduate school, because sometimes that can be a really difficult transition. Um, what are what are the kind of spaces you've chosen to live and work in and the kinds of communities that you've created or connected yourselves to to sustain your practice? Okay, um, I, when I graduated from school, made a list of things that I would need to continue my practice. And number one was a studio. And I wanted some place that was large enough where I could shoot video, I could shoot full length video, uh, so I started looking at apartments in Chicago. Uh, I had decided to stay because I did have a nice community there. A lot of my graduating class was there. Um, and the professors that I studied with were very supportive of students who had graduated and stayed. I was able to find kind of a split level loft. I live upstairs and I work downstairs, um, hoping to, um, in the coming months, use it not only as my studio, but as a performance venue um, and a place to show film, video, new media of my colleagues. Um, and I've also joined several informal performance groups that do public performance in Chicago. Um, and I've also joined the Chicago chapter of um, The Field, which is a New York-based critique group that I meet with every Sunday uh, with people from all disciplines, um, from all walks of life, to talk about our artwork. And um, I, as you said, remained in the Providence area, partially to kind of continue to live with my RISD family, um, which... Um, Ha, they, they, the faculty, some of the faculty in the department have a studio about 20 minutes outside of Providence and rent space there. And I d chose to rent a space from them where we have a wood shop and a metal shop and I'm able to um, construct furniture and sculpture. Um, it's very hard to get started out in a, a field in which you need so many tools and so many um, just large scale 220 volts electricity, et cetera. So, um, so I, I, I've chosen to sort of, cont I, I almost see it as a, an addendum to my, my graduate school experience. Um, I am, was closely tied to my professors and, um, and my, my fellow students, some of which are also in the space. And so it, it allows me to continue being a part of that, pretty much the same community. And I, I just wanted to add that um, that community has been so important to me as a young artist. Um, who is putting most of her money towards rent um, to be able to borrow someone's camera and borrow someone's light kit and have people I can call on to help me make work. Um, one of the, my friends got a job as a professor and, and as part of his package, he received a copy of, of Final Cut Pro and so I can edit on his computer. Um, so piecing together kind of the, the tools to make art uh, has been incredibly important in using each other's resources. And actually, Sarah, could you talk a little bit more about why you decided to stay in Chicago instead of go back to New York? Which sure. You were familiar with? Um, well, I think it, it had a lot to do with that community that I had there, that there were people there. And part of the reason I went originally to Chicago um, was I just, I, I felt like I needed a little space and a little time. Chicago is a great city um, and has a vibrant art scene, but it's much smaller and um, is, is not nearly, it's not Chelsea in any way. So people who are a few years ahead of me are um, being able to work with very young galleries and show their work, and people who are a few years ahead of them are being able to work with places like the Contemporary Art Museum of Chicago, uh, getting very small shows, being part of group shows. It seems like there's opportunities and room for success in Chicago um, that I didn't, I wasn't sure I would find in New York. Mm 